Okay, well, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Bruno Cornille, I'm partner at uh, Accommodata. This is uh, Ronnie Hogan, uh, our operations manager and uh, business consultant regarding uh, Udu for, uh, for fashion. Uh, it starts to become uh, uh, an annual event at uh, Udu Experience that we present uh, the latest release of uh, Udu for fashion. So we will do the same uh, this, uh, this year. Um, maybe a little bit of, of history, since we have uh, like 20 minutes uh, I will have to keep up pace, but uh, we'll try to spend as much time as possible for uh, the, the demo. But uh, we started uh, with Udu for Fashion in version 8. Uh, it evolved in version 9, version 10, version 11, and now we are uh, in on version 12. As a matter of fact, as of today, uh, Udu for Fashion has been divided in two uh, subcategories. We have a solution for uh, wholesale uh, businesses in the fashion, and we have a solution for uh, companies who are active in the retail part of the fashion uh, business. So Udo for Fashion covers uh, both sides. Uh, we will focus uh, today uh, towards the retail part of it, but of course we will show some features uh, of the wholesale business too. Uh, you might have noticed uh, in uh, Udo version 13 that has been released yesterday. There is also some functionality regarding grid. You can order an, an item in sizes and, and colors. Of course, this is an overlap with uh, Udu for Fashion. Our strategy as a product uh, developer is uh, to uh, maintain, to keep up as close as possible with the Udu standard. So as of today, we feel like we have more functionality regarding grid possibilities, but we will continue invest in our product and take as much as the standard of, of uh, possible. So we are not competing with Udu. Instead of it, we are building, we continue building on top of uh, Udu. So as of today, as Udu for fashion, indeed, we have uh, enhanced Udu with uh, grid functionality uh, on purchase, uh, sales side of it, front end, uh, back end. Uh, we also uh, have uh, enhanced the POS uh, modules in, in uh, Udu for fashion, and we will give later on a, a demo, a full demo of, uh, of uh, Udu for fashion POS. We have enhanced CRM and uh, functionality uh, such as pre-orders in, in for the wholesale. Uh, we have the grid on purchase, on warehouse management. We have been building reporting specific KPIs for, for the sector. And, instead, and in fact, due to the Udu platform, we propose a solution that is multi-channel, multi-brand, multi-store. We combine ERP, POS, and e-business all together in one pack package that we state that we can uh, implement fast since we have a lot of uh, standard functionality for, for the sector. So. Um, uh I, I will start my uh, presentation with uh, a, a little demo of uh, some wholesale functionality and we will continue, Ronnie will continue later on, uh, on the retail part of it. So uh, indeed when we go to uh, Udu, this is uh, version 12 with all uh, Udu for Fashion modules integrated as an end user. You don't see the difference between standard Udu and of course the uh, enhanced modules that we have. When we go to products, of course we have like extra functionality. Uh, regarding uh, gender, collection, brand, size grouping, color grouping. So indeed, uh, we uh, put uh, a lot of extra information on the, the product card. As a result, uh, when I create a proposal or I do a purchase, uh, we can explore the grid possibilities in, in uh, Udu for fashion. So when I go to uh, a, qu an, a quote or an order, which is uh, standard functionality, and I uh, would quote for uh, this store, I can select my customer, and then here I can select a model of a product, and I can add my functionality. This is uh, our grid. Indeed, we have the possibility to enter quantities per size, per color, you see, very fast. Um, and of course, we also have per product the price, the stock in, in quantities, etc. The interesting part of it is that we can, of course, uh, modify the prices. We can give an additional discount. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, extra features and possibilities also already in the grid. But uh, just as uh, what we have seen in version 13, finally it results in, in order lines and then of course we can uh, combine and, and continue the flow. So we have uh, that whole functionality already in, in the system. Okay. Um, 
we have that on, on sales, on purchase, on warehouse. We combine that on invoicing. So on your invoice, you see indeed uh, all uh, the lines, but you can also see the information based on the grid. But I won't give uh, to spend too much time on that part. I would like to take the opportunity to show what we have done on the retail side of it for uh, POS, uh, for fashion-oriented uh, companies. And I will give the mic to uh, Ronnie. Here you are, Ronnie. Okay, put it a little high. So Udu has a, a standard POS, but with uh, some of our customers lacked a lot of functionality, like uh, reservations, uh, transfers from one shop to another automatically, uh, being able to sell gift cards in turnover, not in turnover. Um, and also in, in the back end, uh, we, we enhanced the flow of opening and closing sessions so that it's more how do you call it in a nice way? So I would say idiot proof, but to avoid mistakes. So I, since the time is very limited, I will go very fast. So when we open now a new session, uh, our customers want that the opening balance is automatically set. Normally here there are a lot of coins, cents, all coins possible, so I will start now here. And also who did it in the morning? So who opened the first, the, the drawer, the session? So when I now open it, I can open the session, the, uh, the screen, I will come back later. I will duplicate the screen. Uh, so also I have the backend. So now it's like standard with the POS. We enhance the speed a lot of loading. It can work up to 50, 60, 70,000 products without any problem. Um, at first sight, it's the UDA POS, but like you see here, we add a lot of functionality uh, visibly. And a lot of customers say, okay, this is very nice with pictures and stuff, but we want also the grid. So we lowered the list. So we entered a list. Uh, I don't know the product demo by heart. Let me check for Clockhouse. So for instance, there's a list and you can open it. You can open it by color. You can open so it's a, a, a private table on color and size with extra functionality. Sometimes somebody comes to the counter and asks, do you still have this in, uh, in this size or in this size? Immediately you have the stock grid on hand. Not only in your shop, but you can also see it in the other shops. So we have customers who use it on eight shops in different locations. So immediately they can, they can see the stock on other locations. This is the visual part. Now let's uh, move on quickly to the sales part or, or the functional part. I won't do any normal sales since this is too easy. Let's say uh, somebody comes to the, to the desk, he wants to buy this, this uh, shirt. Uh, you can select the customer, you enhance the search, that is really a fuzzy search. You can search on, uh, for instance, I see here somebody living in Kortrijk Straat Tilt. So if you enter Kortrijk Tilt, it searches on, on a lot of fields together. Oh, I made somewhere a mistake, I guess. No, anyway. I will take a customer. I said customer. What I want to show you is, uh, for instance, they want something to be uh, changed, changing uh, a button or whatever. You can enter uh, a node on it to say what is what has to be changed. But you can also, w when they leave it there, you can say, okay, they leave it here, they have to be changed something. We can register reservations. They do an advance payment in the POS. So a reservation is made. They say, okay, approximately, let's say next uh, Tuesday, you can pick it up, done. So now, when it is printed, you see there, is a, uh, there was an advance paid for 50 euros for this. So next time the customer comes, comes back with this ticket. Of course, it can be scanned, but I have don't have a scanner with here. There is already always an overview of uh, which tickets has been uh, are in reservation, so they can immediately pick up their, their goods, pay it, and uh, okay, cash uh, 80 euros pay. So this is the first big enhancement we did: is the possibility to make reservations, advance payments with notes. I didn't add a note, but it's possible. The second scenario in this is uh, I want uh, this, but it is not available. It's available in one of my other shops in another city. 
So again, I can say this customer wants this. Um, so I'm going to pay 20 euro in advance. But now I say it is a, a special command, it's just a, a terminology. So now they can say, OK, it should be picked up from the stock in my other shop. And it should be brought to the reservations here in this shop. So all stock-related transfers, internal transfers, stuff like this, are automatically handled in the back end. A mail is sent to the other shop from, please take this out of your shop, deliver it to us. And again, the customer paid in a, in, uh, made an advance payment. He has his ticket, so next time he comes to pick it up, either you scan it or you take this reservation, and you can pay it. Or you can cancel it, oh no, it was not that what I wanted, so we can cancel it. So let's say I cancel it, you can cancel all products or some of the products you, you made a reservation for. If I do a cancellation, some of our customers don't like to give money back. Say, mm, we, we will give a credit voucher. So also this system is in place to issue credit vouchers. So when they don't give money back, so I, they, they pay 20 euros, I decided not to give any, any money back. So now, as you can see here, a credit voucher is issued. Now I should write down this number since I don't have a scanner. So I can show you, we can also pay them with reservations. I hope I wrote it down correctly. So next time, oh, I give it to to my wife or to anybody, this credit voucher is not on, on linked to this customer, it can be used by anyone. But you have to have the voucher with you. So now I do another payment, another purchase, I say I want to pay. As you see, th this was another enhancement, it's all, it's a parameter. You can force the POS that you have to indicate who is doing the sale. So, pin code protected, so always the person who is behind the counter is printed on the, on the ticket. So you know uh, this sale was done by this person. If there's something wrong, you know who did it. And you can force it. So now he comes to the counter, but he has a credit voucher. So we scan the credit voucher. I just have to enter it manually here. Oh. Uh, probably I made a mistake. That's why I opened the backend. <laughs> if there are any, any discussion or you don't find anything, you can always follow in the backend uh, issue date. So it was this one of 20 euros. So it is this voucher. I don't know what I did wrong, but. OK. The, the system knows, OK, there's still 20 euro valid on this credit voucher. You can use the entire amount, or you can say, no, I will only use 10 euro this time in whatever case that would be, and the rest cannot be paid by cash, bank terminal, or whatever other payment method you have, but this is standard POS. So I'm gonna pay the rest by cash, 50 euro. So also in the back end, there is a trace. If there is any discussion with the customer, you can always look up, uh, one second, because I'm not used to this keyboard. You can also always see what was done with a credit force. It was used on this ticket, on this shop, so we can click and then see the history of the usage of this credit voucher. We did the same for, like I said, for uh, gift cards. So when I sell a gift card, you can decide, because I don't know in, in, in other countries than in Belgium, it depends on the, if you have one or multiple VAT percentages in your shop, if it is immediately in turnover or only in turnover when it is used. So this is a parameter, but that doesn't matter now. Here we, you have also the choice, some, some shops, some customers of ours work with very fancy gift cards where there's already a pre-printed uh, barcode so they can scan it. If not, you can decide to print a gift card on a ticket. For my sake, no, I will use a number I can easily remember, one, two, three, four, and I say, okay, 100 euro. Multiple card, I won't explain. This is something uh, that's a very strange case, but it works. Uh, so I, I'm gonna sell it together with some other stuff. I'm gonna link it to a customer that's not mandatory. While I'm on this screen, you can also see we also changed the loyalty principle. In Udo, it works most of the time with free products or with uh, points. Our customer says, no, we want to give after each sell, for instance, 5% for the next uh, 
for the next time. So loyalty amounts in this case are really in, in money. And we can exclude products, so say on this, this, and this product we never give loyalty. Uh, you can also decide to give, to give no lo loyalty on products which are already in discount. So there are also some use cases you can say, okay, loyalty is 5%, but not on these, are these products, not in these cases. So this is also something, five minutes? <laughs> like I said, I have to go very fast. Uh, said customer. So I go to payment. Again, I have to say who I am. Uh, I'm going to pay by cash, 200 euros. So now I, I sold a gift card. And uh, also in the back end, you can see this gift card. Of course, afterwards, this gift card can be used. Uh, issue date can be used afterwards with the full history. So if I look, it will be full history. Let me have a look quickly, since I have only three minutes left. So I showed you the stock grid, uh, return of goods. So when somebody brings something back, that's a, a very interesting feature. You can say, OK, I will bring it back. And they normally, they have to have their receipt with it. If you have your receipt with you, but I don't know any receipts by heart now, you can enter this. Uh, you can scan the barcode on the receipt. All the products sold on this ticket will be shown. You can say, OK, this and this is returned. And then again, you can decide either give some money back or an issue a credit voucher. This is the principle of uh, returning goods. Uh, product view is just that you see the, the backend view of so the information on the product. Don't mind the spelling mistake. And also, which color is, is it available? You can enter a remark, as I said, on a ticket. It's also printed on the ticket. Uh, history is to be able to reprint the receipt, gift card, gift card list, so that the uh, cashier doesn't have to go to the backend to search for, you can also search here for cred active credit vouchers and active uh, um, gift cards. And another feature we added is to, while you are in the post, to register money coming in or out without selling or buying something. Like you have to, e you have to go for a coffee and you take it from the cash, so you don't have to go to the back end to make a ticket. You can just enter here, take money out, the reason, uh, coffee, and I took, uh, it's a mistake, I took uh, two euros. All of this, of course, is, so I'm going to close this screen since I only have one minute left. <laughs> uh, now when I go again to the dashboard of the point of sales, you will see we, enha we enhance a little bit the, so when I'm going to close this shop, you can see everything that has been done. Um, I'm going to uh, end the session. So no, in s you can't close the session. We remove this button until you set the closing balance. So we force the, the cashier to, to count, so entering everything. So again, I'm going to say I have only one uh, piece of 500 euro. Then the system says, OK, you have a difference of 360 euro. I will take here now 360. I will make it correct now just for the case. But also, who closed it? When there is an issue, they can, why was this or this? So I'm going to say uh, some brutal closed it, confirm. So now you can validate and close the post entries. So these were the major features, gift cards, credit vouchers, functionality for transferring between shops, uh, pre uh, make reservations. Uh, we made a lot of enhancements, but time is too short now to, to show them. Yeah. I think this can conclude this very, very quick demo. Okay. okay. It gives you an impression uh, of, uh, if I can have the mic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it gives you an impression, an appetizer of uh, what Udo for Fashion uh, POS uh, does. You have to remember that uh, this has been built uh, in, co in cooperation with a lot of customers. So it, uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, best practice from out the, 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 the business that has been put into the system. And uh, of course, our business model is we uh, implement Udo for Fashion in Belgium, but we work together with uh, uh, other partners, other Udo partners also uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, well, well wide. So at this time uh, we are partnering with uh, Canada, we have a partner in Rome, we have a partner in Rome, Italy, we have a partner in uh, Spain, but of course we are open to work together with other UDU partners in order to um, uh, deliver uh, our components uh, uh, cross-border. These are some references, uh, wholesale, retail uh, customers, and our partners at this time uh, 
uh, in Spain, in Italy, and in uh, Canada. So um, I hope uh, this gave you a little impression on, on, on our product, on our vertical. Uh, we are really keen to continue in investing and developing uh, our solution for that uh, micro vertical. Uh, of course, if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, I think our uh, contact information has uh, printed is printed on, on the on the leaflet. If you have any question, don't hesitate. Do you have so many things for uh, the uh, company who uses it? Anything for the customer? Because you have loyalty points and all this stuff, gift card vouchers. Yes. This is this can be useful for the customer. End customers for something that I, I didn't understand quite well. Like, do you give access to the end customer to the uh, Is there a mobile application or something so that end customers can also connect? You know, sometimes yeah. end customers yeah. are your salesmen. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, there we have to make a difference between wholesale and retail. In wholesale part, of course, a customer can log in into the portal and see his documents. But this is more or less standard features of Udo that has been, that of course, is also included in, in, in the system. On POS side, that could be indeed a very interesting enhancement. Yes. That's a very good suggestion. We have credit vouchers and uh, gift cards yeah, can, right. can be used on the website. Yeah, on the website, there is something like a mobile application that will be a quick widespread. Yeah, yeah, indeed, it's a good suggestion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe a little topic. We also have built a, uh, a connection with uh, uh, reporting tools in order to have appropriate reporting on POS uh, side of things. So if you want to know, okay, what uh, uh, did our collection on uh, brand Jack and Jones? We have a full dynamic reporting that we also can provide in our uh, Udo for Fashion offering. This is. Power BI, but we have made a, a link between Power BI and, and Udo uh, for fashion. Okay, if there are any other questions? Uh yeah, one, one uh, in terms of transfers between shops, when the stock arrives on the stock movement, uh, is there a notification to the customer your item is ready for collection? Uh, not in this version. Okay. It, it, it is possible, it is on the shortlist even, but not right now, I have to yeah. be honest. But it's a feature that yeah. uh, is in demand by, by some customers. Yes. Okay. And You've made a lot of enhancements to the POS in general, which are great. Uh, is it possible or applicable to have this for general retail? Yes. Not just for the fashion industry, because then, you know, yes, you are, you are not variants or maybe even yes, not. Yes, yes. You, right. you are not mandatory to, to use the, yeah. the colors and the, the sizes. Mm -hmm. For instance, we have our prospect who is in a completely different branch, but who is very eager to, to start using it. Yeah. So it's not really... The, it's a side product of Udo for Fashion. It, right. it works fully together with Udo for Fashion, but also as a side product. Okay. Yep. Okay. Other questions? Uh, so. Is it possible to, to put the sales order in the um, in the post and to, to make a ticket? Uh, if you mean really in Udo terms, a sale order product? For sale. example, you, you make a quotation for a customer. Yeah. And. Uh, this is something we are we are now investigating for that new prospect. <laughs> Since this is really working on post orders, yeah. not on sale order, but for the, the new prospect we have, we are looking for an integration sale order, post order also. To the store. To yes. They want to the yeah. And the the, the, the functional analysis is done. Maybe next year we will be able to show it, or next, not next month, but in a few months. But it, it's, it is under investigation since we have really a, a rather big prospect for that. Yeah, and in, in this way, you can, you can have the feature to, to make the, the, the customer able to, to make a quotation on the site, on the website, yeah. and, and to do the same job. Indeed, yeah. yes. But not right now. We still have some some work to do, so that's good. Okay. Great work. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.